Hello and welcome to Earth Affair on AIT. It's a program where we discuss critical health issues with a view to finding a lasting solution. I am your host, Oshuomowa Danes. You're welcome. On the show today, we shall be focusing on exclusive breastfeeding. But before then, let's take you to our new segment for some reports. From a traditional medicine-centered healthcare system that involved more engagement with divine healers, traditional attendants to the emergence of molecular approach to diagnostics, improvement in surgery, interventional radiology, and more infrastructural development, the Nigerian health sector has no doubt come of age. We have more teaching hospitals today. We have more federal medical centers today. We have more general hospitals today that are functional. We have more of every kid of health sector, health sector worker today. As good as these changes may seem, they have not translated to improved healthcare delivery for Nigerians due to what experts have identified as bad leadership. The basic mundane issues of things to work with, of basic allowances, of poor remuneration. These are things we fought over in the 90s, in the 80s. And there are things that are still challenging the health sector today. If you look at nurse patient ratio, physiotherapy patient ratio, pharmacy patient ratio, it's still as bad. And then the issue of brain drain. It's still there. In fact, it's getting worse. Why are we unable to get that leadership that we all think will solve our problems? The inadequate budgetary allocation and failure of the National Health Insurance Scheme have also not spoken well of government's commitment to the sector. Pathetic is the situation where the health budget has to be cut this year because of uh, maybe the revenue for the country is dwindling. Uh, those are the issues. Also for the pharma industry where we play, you'll find out that uh, we still import up to 70% of what we use in country. Okay, so uh, what we should be looking at now is how to, you know, make that better. The Pharmacy Council Act, which uh, has been, um, I think, signed by the, it's been, it been adopted by the House of Assembly and has been sent to the president for his uh, uh, signature, is still not out. This Pharmacy Council Act is going to help uh, the pharmacies to set up satellite pharmacies especially in the hinterland so that more people will have access to healthcare. The experts want government to focus more on the primary healthcare system and find a lasting solution to the unending interprofessional rivalry and industrial disputes for a way forward. As the global number of confirmed COVID-19 cases exceeds the 25 million mark due to a resurgence in countries hitherto considered to have effectively contained the virus, the PTF chairman on COVID-19, Boz Mustafa, and the Minister of Health, Osage Hanire, are calling on Nigerians to keep adhering to the basic preventive guidelines to flatten the curve. Speaking at the COVID-19 task force a briefing in Abuja, Boss Mustafa and the Minister of Health Osage Hanire noted that in Nigeria, the last three weeks have shown a slowdown in the number of confirmed cases and an increase in the number of discharged patients. Nigerians will recall that at the outbreak of the pandemic, it was predicted that the African continent, with its weak health infrastructure and propensity to high disease burden, will be worst hit. However, a recent publication by the Weekly Science Review has indicated that despite having 17% of global population, Africa has accounted for just 5% of global confirmed COVID-19 cases and 3% deaths. Since the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, much focus has been on the Western world to find a lasting solution. But what the only of Ife is saying here is that the numerous herbs that are bound in Nigeria could provide the needed solution if only the relevant authorities can look inward and utilize them. 
our herbal solution is real. I repeat, it is real. We have thousands of testimonials to boost immune. For anything, we have enough testimonial that even professional doctors to the level of consultants, surgeons, they've actually confirmed it. They are even using it. I've not said it publicly. Before I became a king, I used to have a lot of headache because I used to work a lot. And when I became the king on New of Ife, to the glory of God, my work now is like 10 times what I was doing then. But you know what? I changed to Abal products that I inherited on that throne of my ancestors, including my sponge. They are all from abs. I don't use any other thing. I make my soap myself right in my palace. And every abal mix, we have a section. That's the section that led to what is called Elewi or more. It's all over the Yoruba land. It started right in my palace, on your fifth palace. We still have it. Ever since I started using it, I haven't been to the hospital in five years. I can't mention names here of what we have, who we have given to, both high and low in Nigeria. And they came back. We would tell them, if you take this, this is what will happen to you in a particular day. And it has happened. We have huge testimonials. And that's why we're coming out confidently. Huge testimonials for this thing. And that's why we decided to set up Parfumed so that we will advance the research and development. For clinicals, we've even gotten to very advanced stage. We are working with Niprid. We are working with a lot of university. I can assure you that there will be light at the end of the tunnel. Welcome back. Now it's time for our discussion on exclusive breastfeeding, the benefit of exclusive breastfeeding for babies, mothers, and the society at large. Our guest on the show today is a public health consultant, Dr. Mudukwe Akin Yinka. Now breastfeeding is a practice that um, has been with us for a long time and will continue to be with us, but is a practice that is cost effective and helps to ensure that the babies that are being breastfed are well fed, they are healthy, they grow well, they grow strong, they are sharp, they are smart, and then it also has other benefits for all the different uh, members of the family, including the mother that is breastfeeding. And then, of course, it has benefits even for the nation as well. So it's beneficial in all ways. And then the important things to know about breastfeeding is that breastfeeding is the recommended food for a newborn child. From being born till the child is six months old, the child should be breastfed exclusively because of the nutrients for that age in a child, zero to six months. All the nutrients, it contains water, enough water for the child. So the child doesn't need any other thing. Doesn't need water, doesn't need formula, doesn't need any additional things, doesn't need a book or anything like that. And the only thing that may be added is if the doctor prescribes a drug for the child. But once the child is healthy, there will be no need to prescribe any drugs anyway. So, breast milk only for the first six months. Now, at six months, the, the mother should know that once the child is six months old, then the breast milk is no longer enough alone for the child. And so, from six months, the child then takes breast milk plus all these complementary foods. And then the mother continues to breastfeed until the child is two months, two years old. It has been discovered that when mothers exclusively breastfeed their babies, because at that point in time, the child is rapidly developing. It's a newborn child, the child is rapidly developing. So all of these nutrients given to the child at that point in, in time actually help that child to grow better. The child is healthier. The child doesn't fall sick easily. All these upper respiratory 
contract infections like cough, kata, up and down, that diarrhea, up and down. The child doesn't have all of that, so the child is healthier. Then apart from that, the child also is smarter, right? So the from research, we found that the the IQ of children that are exclusively breastfed for the first six months and then they continue breastfeeding again after that with other foods that their IQ is higher than those that had a breast milk substitute. So there's bonding that takes place between the mother and the child, which is very important also for the child's psychological balance. And then of course, it also prevents the child in later life from developing other um, from developing non-communicable diseases like diabetes and things like that. So it's totally beneficial to that child to be exclusively breastfed. So with working mothers, we recommend that they express the breast milk. So they can actually express the breast milk. They can do it manually. They can use a breast pump and they express the breast milk and then they keep it. It can be kept on a tabletop. It can be kept in the fridge, depending on how long they're going to keep it for. So that even when the mother is not around, she's going to work, somebody around can then take the breast milk and feed it to the baby. For a, a mother would want to express breast milk, she would have found out information about it. So she would know that she should, the container that she's going to put the breast milk into, of course, must be properly washed. And then she would, you know, wash her hands and then express the breast milk and then keep it covered and then give instructions to whoever is going to feed the baby with the breast milk such that they also wash their hands and then they feed the baby with the breast milk and preferably not with a feeding bottle. So it can be fed to the baby and but the better or the, the one that we really advocate for would be that we should establish crutches in workplaces. Any workplace that has at least one woman of reproductive age should have a crutch or a separate room so that the mothers have, you know, that privacy in that place to feed their babies, you know, the way they should feed their babies. And then even the mothers, their hearts are at rest because the baby is just, you know, not far away. I can quickly pop in and then come back to work. And one thing that um, um, employers of labor should know is that this actually improves productivity. Because once the mother knows that all I have to do is just step out and feed the baby and I'm back, then she's going to, once she's at work, she will concentrate. She will do better. She will be more productive. She will do that work that you employed her for. She will do a, she will do a better job there than when you didn't have a place for her to keep her baby and she's worried she's concerned she's calling like every hour how is the baby doing is she crying have you fed you know but if the baby is dead then she's at rest and she's more productive and then this works better for everyone um breastfeeding the advantages to the mother the mother herself also benefits from breastfeeding because when she's breastfeeding her baby she's um She's breastfeeding her baby. She's bonding with the baby. So this is also good for her own psychological um, balance. And then apart from that, it helps her to get back in shape on time. Because when she's breastfeeding the baby, hormones are released. And these hormones work on her uterus. And then they help to shrink her uterus. And so she herself can get back in shape on time. Because you know the uterus would have been big from when the baby was inside. So it helps her get back into shape on time then it also is protective for her because okay before i go to the protection it's also good for her because she she doesn't have to go through all the stress of preparing formula you know washing a feeding bottle sterilizing the feeding bottle uh, making sure the water is not too hot not too cold you know mixing it all of that is taken away. All she has to do to feed that baby, once the baby is hungry, is to put the baby to breast and then she feeds the baby. So it's less stressful for her. And then, of course, she doesn't have to buy the baby milk. So it's less expensive. So all that money can be used for other things. 
for her and for the rest of the family, then for herself, her health also benefits from it because it reduces her chances of developing cancers like breast cancer because from research it's been found that women that breastfeed are less likely to develop breast cancer and then also ovarian cancer too her chances are reduced then of course it also helps to keep her from getting non-communicable diseases like diabetes as well when she does that so it's it benefits her immensely when she breastfeeds her child now the baby himself or herself benefits a lot from it because the baby is sh sure to get adequate nutrition enough water enough of all of the nutrients there are immunoglobulins which help to fight infection you know so everything that the baby needs at that time is there in the breast milk that's zero to six months of life so the baby is therefore healthier than if the baby wasn't being exclusively breastfed now, to the rest of the community, including the father, the money that would have been used to purchase the breast milk is saved. The, the, all the packaging that is done, the production process for breast milk substitutes, all of those ones can be used for something else. So it helps everybody. If you are a mother with a child zero to six months of age, please breastfeed exclusively, no water, nothing in addition breast milk already has the water give the baby that breast milk and then from six months you can then add other complementary foods to it and then if you are not the one with the baby you are a mother but not the one with the baby you are a mother-in-law you are a friend you are the father please support the woman that is breastfeeding her baby you know whoever you are please support breastfeeding protect breastfeeding ensure that breastfeeding is carried out for any child that has been born so that at least we can have a smarter community of people and once we do this then we're sure to we're sure to improve you know our nation dr akinka thank you very much for that eye-opening lecture about exclusive breastfeeding more for you after this break please don't go away to our nutrition segment an aspect of this show we will preach the gospel of eating right to stay healthy. And the focus for today is on the nutritional benefits of potatoes. The word potato comes from the Spanish word for a plant called patata. These herbaceous plants, which produce stem tubers, belong to the same family as the garden egg. Potato is a versatile root vegetable, an underground starchy tuber of the plant Solanum tuberosum. And the plant is a perennial in the nightshade family Solanaceae. Wild potato species originated in modern day Peru and it can also be found presently throughout the Americas. From the United States of America to Southern Chile, although it was originally believed to have been domesticated by the indigenous people of the Americas, particularly the people of Southern Peru and the Northwestern Bolivia between 7,000 and 10,000 years ago. Potatoes were introduced into Europe from the Americas in the second half of the 16th century by the Spanish and are today a staple food in many parts of the world. As of 2014, potatoes were the world's fourth largest food crop after maize, wheat and rice. They are one of the most important food crops in the world. Potatoes are also one of the foods that the United Nations and the World Health Organization promote in their war against hunger due to their great nutritional value and because they are so space efficient and easy to cultivate in large amounts. There are thousands of varieties with different sizes, shapes, colors, textures, qualities, and flavors. There are the yellow, the purple, fingerling, 
and the petite, red and white, which is popularly known as the Irish potato. They all have their characteristics and cooking recommendations. The importance of potato as a food source and culinary ingredient varies by region. It is an indispensable part of Indian cooking and it used to be the number one food in the United States of America. So much that in 1835, Abraham Lincoln, one of the greatest American presidents, declared that potatoes should be eaten in America every day because he said it was delicious. Potatoes are prepared in many ways and it could be skinned on or peeled, whole or cut up with seasoning or without. Most potato dishes are served hot, but some are first cooked, then served cold. Notable are the potato salad and potato chips. Common dishes are mashed potatoes, baked potatoes, boiled or steamed potatoes, and of course, the popular French fries, which is one of the world's favorable dishes. In 2018, the world's production of potatoes was 368 million tons, led by China, with 27% of the total world's production. Other major producers of potatoes are India, Russia, Ukraine, and the United States of America. When freshly harvested, potatoes contain 80% water and 20% solids, mostly starch. 100 gram serving of raw potatoes contain 58 calories of energy, Protein, 5% of the daily value. Carbohydrate, 4% of the daily value, with 2.5 grams of dietary fiber, which is 9% of daily value. Potatoes contain numerous vitamins, such as vitamin C, 30% of daily value. Vitamin B6, 18% of daily value. Vitamin B3, 6% of daily value. Vitamin B5, 6% of daily value. Vitamin B2, 3% of daily value. Vitamin B1, 2% of daily value. Potatoes also contain appreciable amounts of minerals. Iron, 18% of daily value. Potassium, 9% of daily value. Manganese, 26% of daily value. Copper, 47% of daily value. Magnesium, 6% of daily value. Phosphorus, 5% of daily value. Smaller quantities of calcium, zinc, and selenium. Potatoes are stuffed with polynutrients, which are organic compounds of plants that promote good health. Their composition makes them very good antioxidants as they neutralize potential harmful free radicals which increase the risk of diseases like heart diseases and diabetes. Now let's take you to our Vox Pop segment and the focus for today is on the National Health Insurance Scheme, NHRS. I've not heard about that for now. I'm just hearing it for the very first time now. No, no, I don't know about that. When I when I, I seek, my pastor will pray for me. I pray for me. I pray for myself because I have a prayer point. My company made provision for that, for myself, my wife, and my children. These days, a lot of companies or corporate organizations come with the idea of insurance. At the end of the day, it becomes fraud, and that's why people are skeptical. People, let it, you know, people in the health sector, let them go in mass to the public, in the markets, marketplaces. In the you know where people have you know doing their businesses, and they educate them on this. I hope you've been well informed about exclusive breastfeeding and other issues we brought to you today on the show. Please keep a date with us same time next week. I am your host Ushua Mowa Danes. Till then, please keep staying safe. Mm -hmm.